we're entering the final stretch. We've given you all the five big state results. But we're also going to tell you what all this means, the big picture ahead of counting day on Sunday. The one question that's being asked again and again is what can go wrong? What can go wrong in terms of deviations from the India Today exact quote? So if things change on Sunday, what can change and to what extent? I'll try and answer this question. So what we've done is we worked out the list of clean wins and we worked out the list of tough fights. So if something changes, it's the tough fight seats which can go in different directions. So we'll have that break up for you in just a while. But before that, let's take you through the headlines. That's right. The big headline today, India Today, Access by India exit poll predicts a Congress win in Telangana. The party projected to win 63 to 73 seats. Chandrasekhar Rao's BRS set to win 34 to 44 seats. Prime Minister Modi attends the 20th Climate Summit in Dubai, says nations must put self-interest aside while fighting climate change. India proposes to host COP33 summit in 2028. Tamil Nadu police arrest an enforcement directed official on bribery charges. Ankit Tiwari held after an 8-kilometer chase on the Dindigul Madurai Highway. The U.S. says it's glad that India has announced a probe into allegations of a plot to kill six separatist leader Gurpatpan Singh Pannu. The MEA has clarified the charges of assassination are, a, are contrary to Indian policy. Following Hamas's violation of the pause, combat has resumed in the Gaza Strip. Israel ground, air and naval forces strike terror tra targets in the north and south of Gaza. First of course, let's tell you what was the big finding today that's come. You can see it on your screen, but let's reiterate it for our viewers. You've been waiting for those Telangana numbers. Remember, in Telangana, we are projecting a clear win for the Congress party. Out of 119 seats, the Congress expected to get 63 to 73. The BRS that has ruled Telangana for the last nine years, 34 to 44. BJP, 4 to 8. Others, 5 to 8. So, after... Predicting a BJP wave in Madhya Pradesh, a tough cliffhanger in Rajasthan, a slight edge in Chhattisgarh to the Congress, Mizoram to the ZPM, a clear win. We are predicting a clear win in Telangana to the Congress. So when you look at that, Rahul, it means that we could have a super Sunday where the spoils could be divided. No, And because the post-poll studies, particularly Pradeep Gupta's data and he's here with us, have been, convention, have been contrary to conventional political narratives, that makes it that much more spicy and interesting. So Super Sunday will be long, it will be exciting, because Gupta Ji, you have all confused me. Super over on Super Sunday. Hey, so, aap, aap, Where hey, are you hey, expecting hey, a hey, Super hey, over? Hey, hey, Pradeep Ji, you see, Pradeep is very good at election predictions, but he is not good at cricket predictions. <laughs> he predicted, let's tell the viewers, Pradeep Gupta, Aray, my friend, no, 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 Pradeep Gupta, my friend, predicted a New Zealand-South Africa final. <laughs> As it turned out, both these teams reached the semi-final. Pradeep was very excited. What happened? India beat New Zealand. South Africa lost to Australia. Then Australia player. won the final. What did Pradeep say? I told you, India nahi jitega final. So <laughs> Pradeep Gupta... <laughs> you know, and I told him, I must tell him. Right or wrong? Yes, I, you are right. And actually, Australia lost two first two matches. <laughs> so, I mean... The prediction, it's not a prediction, it's the train where it is going, w what kind of hunger and what is the luck playing. You know, the first thing I told that, Pradeep he, when know. it was told to me that he's making But you are missing prediction. the football FIFA. Ah, football FIFA, he got right. You see, with Pradeep, he will always remind you of what he's got right. He was very clear, Messi and Argentina the, were going to win, right? The first... The France, France and Argentina France final. France and Argentina final. And if it is tie, then Argentina win. If it is not, then France will win. Okay, this so I just want to tell okay. everyone, since we're having this conversation, France the came after only me. thing I told Gupta ji when he said he's doing these cricket predictions is, you don't have the tools to do this. Chordo, this is a sukha. You have no clue. No, where sit we back, have watch the match. Where you have no we have posted, it is just that this what having is my fun. gut feeling. Ah. That's it. But here, remember, it's a lot of data. This is not gut feeling. This is not coming from the gut. It's coming from data and that's really what we trust and respect much more 
then who's going to win the cricket match there? It's, it's just like a tukkar. You could get it right, you could get it wrong. means nothing, really. Okay, so what can change? I think that is a question a lot of people in the conversations they're having amongst themselves are asking. You know, what's the chance these guys are right? What's the chance that they could be wrong? So I'll try and quantify that as well. And how we'll do this is this. In some seats, in the post-poll data that we have, it's very clear that the winner is a particular party. And in some seats, it's a tough fight where because the polling is within the margin of error, you can't say with any with very strong confidence interval that ABC party is going to win. So I'll start with Madhya Pradesh and then try and explain what we're going to do. And this is very important because in the fights which are tough, even Gupta ji doesn't know. So he'll have various tools with which he's trying to diagnose and determine. But frankly, it's very difficult to say. Nobody really knows. Even the BJP top brass don't know on those tough fights who will win because the margin is really 500, 1000, 2000, 3000. You can't guess that in a poll where the sample itself is just 500, 600. Okay. So here it is. I'll start with Madhya Pradesh and I'll explain what we're doing. India Today and Access My India predict that the BJP has 110 safe seats in Madhya Pradesh where it really should be easy for the BJP. According to our poll, they shouldn't be losing. The halfway mark is 116. So if you have 110 safe seats in Madhya Pradesh for the BJP, it means the chances, according to Pradeep, of the Congress coming to power in Madhya Pradesh are very low. They're very low because the BJP is likely to back some percentage of these 42 seats. They just need six. The asking rate beyond the safe is just six. Anything more than six, the BJP is through. Therefore, Madhya Pradesh, according to this tough fight data that I put out for the first time, really shows that the BJP ought not to lose Madhya Pradesh according to this Access My India data. Can the Congress win? That's what Kamal Nath and Digvijay Singh and everybody else are hoping for, that the poll is bogus. Even if the Congress wins all the 19 tough fight seats and you add them, you just about reach 76. So you don't have any scenario on Sunday, according to this post-poll analysis of the Congress ending up with more than 76. So the BJP starting point, according to our data, is 110 on Sunday. The Congress's ending point, according to our data, is 76. So basically, unless you have no clue about what you're doing, the BJP shouldn't lose and the Congress can't win Madhya Pradesh. I can tell you, maximum plus minus 10 seats in the state of 200 plus total count. So maximum BJP can lose 10 seats out of those 42 seats, which can add to 29, and Congress Delhi go as high as 87, 90 maximum. That, that's the maximum it can happen. On the other side, it can touch the my higher uh, upper range of BJP to 170 plus also. You know, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, there are about 70 odd seats, which the BJP has not never, lost, never lost in the last three to four elections. I can show that. Just one that second. That therefore gives the BJP a huge edge because there is a, there are so many seats. Where no, the we BJP can show that to our viewers, Rajdeep. Uh, quantify that on the map, on the tough seats of uh, Madhya Pradesh. We can actually break that down for our viewers. So the BJP has, in Madhya Pradesh, 58 seats they haven't lost in any election for the last three elections. Our poll predicts that the BJP is bagging 45 of those seats. The BJP has 82 relatively safe seats, seats which they won twice in the last three. If you won twice in the last three, you think you're very strong over there. The BJP, according to our poll, predicted to bag 57. The BJP has 79 weak seats, seats which they won only once in the last three elections. Our poll predicts the BJP will bag 46 of those. And the BJP expected to bag four out of 11 very weak seats which they won, which they haven't won in any election in the last three elections. So, Rajdeep, that's really the breakup that... If you're winning almost all your safe seats, most of your relatively safe seats, and a large percentage of weak seats, you're through. You know, uh, Rahul Varma, who was with us earlier yesterday, made a very interesting point, I thought, when he said, much like Gujarat, BJ, uh, Madhya Pradesh too is showing signs of a dominant BJP state. Barring 2018, where they only lost by four seats in the end, the entire history of Madhya Pradesh over now 20 years has shown the BJP consistently getting a strong lead over its rivals. And that, I think, makes Madhya Pradesh, like Gujarat, a BJP bastion. So everything has to go wrong for the BJP and everything has to go right for the opposition.
for them to win this state. Now, no, what happened? Even then, it doesn't work. No, I'll tell you what happened yeah. in 2018. A lot of people asked me this overnight. What, what has changed dramatically? 2018, you will recall, Rahul. Preeti will remember Mansoor, farmer firing, and there was anger among farmers in part. You will recall there was an ordinance brought in to dilute the SCST uh, 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 Atrocities Act, which angered the upper caste. Some of them actually got together and even tried to form a political party Spock. Uh, called Spock and, and come together. So the upper caste drifted away. You saw at that time, therefore, in parts of Madhya Pradesh, where traditionally the BJP was strong, there was an anger building up. Farmer anger, anger among the upper caste. All of this combined with the traditional Congress Dalit tribal vote in pockets meant that the Congress got into the fight in a very competitive election in 2018. And that hasn't happened. And in despite of all this, despite and of OBCs, all this, BJP, BJP secured more votes, more number of votes than Congress, okay. despite of yeah. all this. And, and you know, Preeti was making, you may want to add to that, Preeti, because she made a very good point off air yesterday that the caste census, Rahul Gandhi was going on about in Madhya Pradesh, Hum laenge caste census. Every speech of Rahul Gandhi in Madhya Pradesh starts or is focused on the caste census. The OBCs, as per this poll, have not gone in Madhya Pradesh if, if, with the Congress. So they've gone with them in Telangana, but, but not, not in Madhya Pradesh. So it seems right. that the caste census has not gone. It hasn't caught on. And if you look at it, it hasn't even caught on in Rajasthan. Did so, it catch on when you traveled through Madhya Pradesh? No, it didn't. So what? Uh, well, no, not at all. Not at all. And, uh, you know, it, it was the election for the Congress in Madhya Pradesh, uh, Rajdeep, that entire bogey where most of them thought that they were talking about the OBC caste, it doesn't matter when it comes down to the tribals. They are looking at what they're getting into their pockets. They don't care. Transactional. Totally. Yeah, but but I, think, I think there's a Hindutva core. Do you think, Ashok Malik, it's becoming a domination state, single party like Wait. Gujarat? No, no. I, don't, I wouldn't say that because the Congress still gets a very large percentage of votes. Uh, but it, uh, the BJP and the Sangh have had deep roots in Madhya Pradesh. No? Frankly, even ahead of Gujarat. That's right. in, in some senses, this was the original BJP state. Uh, in 2018, because of a, a, a series of factors, including multiple governments, both in, in 2017 in Gujarat and 2018 in, in Madhya Pradesh, was perhaps the Congress's best chance of getting rid, defeating the BJP in both of those states. If the BJP has recovered in Madhya Pradesh, the way it, it recovered in, in Gujarat last year, it's probably beginning a new cycle of BJP dominance, which would worry the Congress. Okay. Because this means this could be another multi-term... You know, and, and I want to make this point very quickly, that Madhya Pradesh, Rahul, is a state where the Congress has not been able to throw, not just a new generational, but not just... They've not been able to find that OBC tribal leadership, which will attract... A, a wider alliance. They, they haven't been, been able to, Rajdeep, galvanize the OBC vote mm. as one block. They haven't been able to they, do that. Where's the leadership? Split. Where's the leadership? It Kamal Nath is a Punjabi Khatri. Digvijay Singh is a Rajput. Who are your OBC in a state with a 48-50% uh, There's no OBC common population? identity. You they've been able one, to find one, where one the OBC more, is One more point. If these numbers are correct, then it also shows that the integration of the Sindhya faction with the BJP, with all its problems, has been achieved. Okay. What we want to do, we've spent a few minutes on Madhya Pradesh since there are people, pundits, politicians, just common folks watching us in all states. I want to spend some time on Rajasthan and well, and that's where things are more exciting in terms of just the arithmetic. <laughs> so we'll show you the tough fight breakup for Rajasthan. Very and as I big. said this, this is where things, if there is a super over, could it happen in Rajasthan or could it happen in Chhattisgarh? Madhya Pradesh seems game, set, and match for the BJP as per the India Today Access My India data. Now, according to the India Today Access My India, tough fight breakup for uh, Rajasthan. The Congress has 68 clear leads and the BJP has 59 clear leads. So 68 seats according to our data, the Congress seems safe. 59 seats according to our data, the BJP seems safe. However, if the BJP bags a disproportionate share of the tough fights, on 31 seats they have the edge, but they're in a tough fight, which means it would go either way, then the BJP really ends up around, nine, uh, around 90. Yeah, around 90. Uh, however, around 90, if 10 more adds from Congress 25, then it is 100. Correct. And on the Congress's uh, tough fights, you've got 25 tough fights. So you end up around 83. Uh, 20, no, 90, 93. 90, 90, you end up around 93. 93. You end up around 93, sorry, if the Congress ends up winning most of these tough fights. So that basically means that no one 
uh, according to you in Rajasthan is safe. So the way to decode that data is, uh, depending on which party you're in or who you support, no one in Rajasthan is safe. You, in those tight fights, if the match is going to the super over, you really need luck to go your way, Rajdeep, in Rajasthan. Yes. No, and in Rajasthan, and which makes Pradeep's job an absolute nightmare, is it's not just BJP Congress, these others. The others. You see, in the a the state where the others the have 15, 18 percent, even sometimes 20 percent of the vote in some constituencies, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Many of them do not have party symbols. Yeah. Many of them have taken, you know, a, a Rajendra Gudda is a good example. The man behind the, uh, you know, the, the so-called Red Diary. Which party is he fighting? Shiv Sena. Now, how did he get, decide on the Shiv Sena? Because if, uh, if, I, if I could add here, it's, it's strange that in a, in a state that has two parties, one would expect that there would always be large, comfortable majorities for one or the other. But in the past 25 or 30 years, both the late Bhairo Singh Shekhawat and uh, Ashok Gehlot have at various times run minority governments for five years. No, but I'll tell you why. I ask this question. You see, you go, for example, there are parts of Rajasthan. We mentioned Nagore, for example, uh, the RLP of, uh, of Han Hanuman Beniwal. Right. It's attracting a section of the Jats. Originally, Jats youth, then it expanded. Now he may be actually retreating, may not be as powerful as he was five years ago. But the fact is, he was able to attract a particular caste group. But in you his go to best, Dungal, only you go to Dungalpur. There, there is, it's the one tribal belt, uh, it's an important tribal belt of uh, Rajasthan. There, the BTP, which had links with Gujarat, was able to consolidate itself. So over time, there are pockets. There is a pocket in Bharatpur, where there is a strong RLD candidate who's very close to Ashok Gelot. But he fights on an RLD uh, party symbol. There are pockets where the BSP, and the BSP tends to give tickets to anyone who doesn't get tickets from Congress and BJP, they go to the BSP. Gudda, you know, Rajendra Gudda get gets it from Shiksena. Let Shinsena. me tell you so, another one. In Shekhawati, there are three seats and one of them possibly will be won the whole, if I'm not wrong, by uh, the left. So there are pockets where even the left is very strong. No, in, in Ganganagar, Bikaner also, they have yeah. pockets, two seats that the CPIM has there. So, so I think Rajasthan, unlike hmm. Madhya Pradesh, Rahul, is not a straight two-party state. It's a state where these <laughs> independence <laughs> rebels could well be two and and all the resorts two in and, and around party. Rajasthan could well be populated so by independents and rebels. Two and a half party. Two and a half party. It's a two and a half party state. That's the problem. It's 90 versus 93, which really means if you're going to be, if we're going to be in the studio late Sunday evening, if you're going to be watching till late at night, not looking at the national big picture takeaways for 2024, if you're still discussing Sunday on Sunday, the results, that's because Rajasthan could really go down to the wire. Ajay Kumar joins us. Ajay, we just played out the results of the Telangana polls which showed the Congress winning. Rajasthan is a much tougher fight. I want to show you what election intelligence dashboard tells us about Rajasthan. Because if I do a strength scanner for Rajasthan, which really tells us what, state, what seat is a party traditionally strong on, uh, that will throw up some interesting insights. I'll start with the BJP strength scan for Rajasthan. The BJP has 28 safe seats in Rajasthan, seats which they've won in every election for the last three elections. Our poll suggests that BJP is likely to bag 19 of those seats. BJP has 77 relatively safe seats, seats which they won twice in the last three polls. Our polls say they'll pick up only 36 of those. They have 76 weak seats, seats which they won only once in the last three elections. Our poll says they'll pick up 31 of those. They have 19 very weak seats. Our poll says they'll pick up five of those. Very weak are those seats which you haven't won in any election for the last three elections. So that's the BJP. Let's do a strength scan. It's like a SWOT analysis of sorts for the Congress. The Congress picking up all their five safe seats, 27 out of 60 relatively safe seats, 39 out of 82 weak seats, and 21 out of 53. So what that, if, I, if you will draw a cricketing analogy, it shows it's a tough match where nobody is being able to dominate and take the match away. The other distinction is it's a state of churning. You see, every five years you will find not just the government changing, but MLAs changing. There are very few MLAs in Rajasthan who will say, I'm going to win all the time, I'm going to win all the time. You can say that in Madhya Pradesh, but you can't say it in Rajasthan. You know, so therefore, you've got a lot like, of churn that takes place within the state. You, you know, there's a saying, and I, do, I, I don't know how to say it, but they say that every five years, the oot gets up and faces yes. the other yeah, way. Yeah. But so, you know, no, 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 somebody told me very good. Rajasthan has a little Marwadi culture. Hai. Marwadi culture, what happens in Marwadi culture? That I have a bank account. I have taken the whole money from someone. But my second bank account, which is closed, I open it in five years and I say, now you put money. 
So you take from one side for five years and no, you take from the other change? side. No, but could that change? That would be, Ashok Malik, a very big change if this roti palatne ka rivaz, which has been going on since 1993, changes this time in Rajasthan. Mm. And that too in favor of the Congress, because remember, not since 2013 when Mukul Sangma got re-elected and Tarun Goga in 2011, has any Congress leader been re-elected in the Modi dispensation? But that is true, but if anybody has a chance, to be fair, it is Gehlot. Why? Uh, he's been a very astute chief minister. He's had so much anti-incumbency, such in pilot uh, rebelling, no, fighting. No, to, to be fair, uh, the, the degree of anti-incumbency from whatever we were hearing was more at the local MLA level, less at the Gehlot level. Because in a sense, Gehlot and has taken a leaf out of Mr. Modi's book of you know, a, 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 a chief minister who has welfare programs which are targeted and which he asso gets associated with his own identity. No, but, but look at history. He's twice been chief minister. Yes. Every time he's contested in the election after becoming chief minister, he's been wiped out. Hmm. The BJP is won by huge margins. 162. He was reduced to 20 21, odd seats. 162 to BJP. That's right. Yes. And, and once to 50 odd seats. So he's been demolished both so the, the time. The strange thing is when the... When the Congress wins or forms governments in Rajasthan, especially under him. It doesn't win a big majority. Sometimes it does not even win a majority. No, no. So my point so you is, you need Gehlot to no, run the so government. So you see, he's had twice. He's been uh, he's gone into an election as chief minister, been demolished. Therefore, 2023, if our numbers hold, is significant for him politically. For the first time, he's showing that after five years in government, I may still be electable. And I just wonder, Raul, whether that's as much due to Gehlot, maybe partly. But also due to the BJP. I think this, this is the one state where the BJP has just not yeah. been able to grab they the didn't narrative, get narrative or set the narrative. You know, I'll show you the historical timeline over here. If you see, 20. whenever the Congress wins, take for example 2008, it's just barely ahead of the BJP. Just barely ahead. When the BJP wins, the BJP hits it out of the park at the Savai Madhupur. Massive victory. The Congress typically, like it did in 2013, crashes, like finished. Again in 2018, when the, oh, oh, when the Congress won, it barely won and the BJP uh, lost. So the BJP, when it wins, it's way ahead of the Congress. The Congress barely wins. That's been the traditional political arithmetic of Rajasthan. Could the magician change that arithmetic? That's the, what would it mean, Pradeep Gupta, for Ashok Gehlot? Given this track record, ki harvate to pitwa ke jate. Even Congress leaders we were speaking to in Rajasthan, some of the senior most were saying, "Yeah, 50 has come, so Ghani Mata, what do you know? 40 has come." No, boss, six months' ki jo delivery hui hai na. Kis cheez ki delivery? So many social welfare scheme, rahat camps to Sanjeevni to so, food packets to so many things. Chiranjeevi. Chiranjeevi. So. I mean, this time Congress has learned the lesson from other political parties, including BJP. They have learned a good lesson. You know, they, they've also made, it's almost like, you know, you've created a personality cult around Gaylord, which we uh -huh. thought would never happen. In, I, don't, I don't think he also thought, you know, he's been a very low profile, un, uh, unassuming leader, relatively, who's suddenly been projected, you go to see these larger than life pictures dotting Jaipur's landscape. In fact, Virtually every paper, every day for the last three months had full page ads of, of Ashok Gehlot. As if, you know, he had he was but, suddenly into Vikas Purush. But my sense is... No, but what is, does this mean? No, but my sense is, is, another reason, another my reason sense is, is the this reason. is going to go down to the wire round. If oh, there sure. is a super over to be had on Sunday, and I am convinced there is going to be one super over, <laughs> it's going to be Rajasthan. Yes, yes. In ke baal jo hai, you dye your hair or you are, have... Black hair like hey, this. No, I do <laughs> not have. Thoda white hair hone wala hai. That is the second reason. Sunday ko thoda tumara white hair hone wala hai. Rajdeep, second reason is the luck. The BJP rebels is spoiling the prospect of True. BJP and whatever anti incumbency or a tradition of changing the government, it is the Rebates. No, but what does but you this agree mean? that there could be a super over? Of course, yes. You agree that there could be a super over? Of course, so yes. So, yes. Sir, sir, yes. Sir, look at the, the answer to most questions is in the data. If you add 59 and 31, you're at 90. Add 68 and 25, you're at 93. This match is inevitably headed in, to in the 90s. super over. This is going to be 90s. This is you. It's 90 plays 93. You're already in the super and over. I, I, nervous you know, nervous Pradeep, Gupta, Pradeep Gupta is a master, but I want to give, I mean, if these numbers are right, there's a guy called Amit in Junjunu. 
who travels the states, all states on bike. Achha. And he got Karnataka spot on. Since then, he's from Rajasthan, Junjunu. For the last four months, he's been telling me, yeh ho ra hai And to be fair to him, he's been telling me every time for the last three months, sir, koi saw nahi par karega. Okay. Or agar koi saw par karega, to wo ghelo I don't know where he's getting it. He goes, you know what he does? He stands at the bus stop, he says, ST stand. Uh, let's meet him after the next lecture. Yeah, he you might know, be this big character. Let's, let's go across to Ajay Kumar. Ajay Kumar joins us from the here. Congress. <laughs> it seems Rajasthan is headed towards a super over. We don't know who will win right in the end, but it's heading to be a very long Sunday from what the data seems to be telling us. Ajay Kumar, what are you making of all the exit poll results that India Today has put out so far? So, so Rahul, uh, uh, I've been in Telangana for the past 45 odd days. So uh, Telangana, I think, uh, is definitely spot on. Uh, on Madhya Pradesh, honestly, what we were hearing from the ground and the, what we are seeing it is so I'm uh, is quite rather uh, contrary to our expectations. Uh, Rajasthan we knew was going to be a was going to be a cliffhanger for a very long time because uh, one is the tradition and to beat the tradition of the uh, of the the tradition which has been in uh, Rajasthan for long was a significant uphill challenge. So and so you need to give a lot of credit to Mr. Gelot and the I think the schemes which worked especially in favor of the women that has at least pushed us. To a point where we have a slight edge, definitely, uh, definitely over the BJP. So uh, I'm a little surprised. I know it's a small state as far as Mizoram is concerned, uh, Rajdeep and Rahul. I you saw the, the, in some the, regions the of Telangana, were... the Congress had 49, 51 percent vote share. When was the last time modern-day Congress people have seen this kind of vote share in the Modi era? You must be jumping with joy with those kind of numbers. No, no. I'm, Obviously, uh, jumping with joy, but the, it would only be what he called cemented on the third. But the the fact is that uh, there was uh, the Congress fought very well in Telangana, uh, right from the right from uh, you know the groundwork being done by the uh, the candidate selection, the communication, uh, and six months back nobody gave us much of a chance. Everybody was predicting 35, 40. If I remember those numbers, which were put up by you guys also, if I'm correct on that. And then suddenly to shift it across to over a landslide or a tsunami, at least uh, apart from the Hyderabad region, uh, the rest of the uh, rest of uh, Telangana is having a huge tsunami. So uh, I guess the numbers will be closer to 71, 72 in Telangana. Very interesting observation made by an old congressman mm -hmm. who says in all analysis of uh, Rajasthan, these are his exact words, the kind of work done by Rajasthan government if poor performing MLAs and ministers had not been given tickets, if Sachin Pilot had been given some more respect and space, we would have got Even 125 one plus. Please do not, they do not give all the credit. In fact, this was an election for us to win well because the BJP had no narrative. And that therefore, if you had given Sachin Pilot the space, that Eastern Rajasthan belt, which could cost you the election. If Congress loses, it is they will lose in the Gujar belt. But and I... therefore, Gaylord... Rajdeep, can I add something? When Sachin Pilot was president... Sorry to bring back to Rajasthan. When, when Sachin Pilot was party president in 2018, whatever we might say, he led to a basic amount of social engineering where the Jats, Gujars, Minas voted together in the eastern uh, Rajasthan belt. So our numbers don't suggest that much of a defection uh, in that side. But where did he campaign this time, if you look at it? He was restricted to his own constituency, which was strong. Um, ideally, he also pulls in a lot of youth. In terms of, you know, if, if, you, if you go and track his rallies, you see the kind of support he has in the youth. He should have been made to campaign across the state of Rajasthan, especially in eastern Rajasthan and the Dhunda region. No, but uh, there's a big problem here. You know, the problem is this, that if the Congress does win in Rajasthan or scrapes through or is close to 100, can the Gandhi family and the Congress top high command live up to their promise of making Sachin Pilot in charge? Because that's what they've promised Sachin Pilot. And if this has happened and the magicians kind of pull something out of the hat, Rajdeep, that then becomes very, very complex. You've given that guy an IOU. You've told him we'll make you chief minister. At some point in time, you really need to deliver. But if you do that and Gello takes offense, he can walk away with his rebels. Well, you know, from I, I, let's give credit to Mr. Gello for having held the Congress together in tough times. But the truth of the matter is, as this person said, more space should have been given to Sachin Pilot because... You're the party president, you're a younger face, 
Preeti is bang on. The youth have a sense of attraction to you. You have, you know, the Gujar community sees you as their leader. But beyond the Gujars, he Sachin Pilot is a, among youth. His appeal cuts across even the caste divide. And I remember no, but Pradeep can turn around and say he's 30 percent no, in the poll. Pilot is no, fine. I remember Pradeep saying to me last time, 2018. That if the Congress wants to do well in the 2019 Lok Sabha, correct me Pradeep if I'm yes, wrong, yes. they should make one of Sachin Pilot or Jyotiraditya Sindhya, their chief ministers of Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh, to actually change the, the narrative. Yeah. You need, you see, yeah. uh, Gaylord could have even started off, at some stage you could have made Sachin, or as you are rightly saying Rahul now, the Congress has to decide, do I want a general... You know, the BJP wants to win 2024. You are not Congress. allowing the growth. The Congress's problem will be, they'll be so happy... With, if they win a Rajasthan or scrape through, they'll forget that you've got to build towards 2024. Let's ask Ajay Kumar that question. Because you, everyone's seen that public play out of Sachin Pilot's rebellion, which was quashed, he came back. Uh, now, at some point in time, the young man expects to be chief minister. You've promised him, okay, let's win this election, then we'll see. If you do scrape through, but you've got this kind of a fractious majority, what happens to Sachin? Dr. Kumar. Look, uh, Rahul, I think uh, the process will be that where the MLS sit, and you've seen it in, uh, you've seen it in Himachal. Uh, I think, Mr. Whether, and I can see uh, Rajdeep uh, trying to suppress a smile, but I'm telling you seriously. No, that, no, you are not willing for a generational to... change. You see, y'all are, y'all are, y'all will be so happy can if you I, win I, the, I, if you win one or two states, you'll forget you've got to win the big war. Mr. Modi is looking at the big war in every state. Y'all are looking at short term gains sometimes. So, can, so, so one sec, one sec. So, so what do you expect in your scenario? Is that Mr. Gelot led the election and the situation is where just in case for the situation is there, what do you expect? Give more space. To Give at least more space to the younger Rajdeep, man. Rajdeep, Rajdeep, Rajdeep. Give more space Rajdeep, to the younger Rajdeep, man. He was your leader Rajdeep, in 2018. Rajdeep, you virtually discarded him. And you came back. Rajdeep came back from 21 seats. But you know, Dr. Kumar, may I ask you a question on that grounds? If these numbers hold true, then on Sunday. You must be booking a resort, but are you also scared that somebody from your own party must, might be booking a parallel resort? <laughs> <laughs> So my question is, uh, why don't you ask this question, Preeti? You seem to be so protective of the BJP. Won't they be booking a resort? So how much protective of the BJP? Once, once, can I complete? You guys, I think let me speak and complete. Or please don't keep, because everyone keeps interrupting. So let me complete my sentences before you all jump in. The first sure, question sir, is, how many times How many times have you asked this question? With a, can we not break the BJP? So will not BJP take their guys even if they're losing to the resort? So those are, you know... Those are fantasies which we continue to create on a TV discussion to keep the discussions going along. The simple now, those have been may, I, may I interrupt, Dr. Kum uh, uh, Dr. But, Kumar? But, but, those are fantasies which have been fueled by reality. You and I both know how many uh, days there was a resort booked in Manisar, sir. So come on. And then yeah, thereafter. So, so, so let me complete. So let me complete. Please. It, it's, the, it's the abyss of politics when we don't charge the guys who resort to the ensuring that democracy gets subverted and no questions asked to them. Nobody is asked a question on how does BJP continue to destroy. No, first question, Preeti, it's an important question. So whether people are there to protect the, and if you're taking people to ensure the MLS are protected, you're trying to protect democracy, but the, but the, but the anti-socials are trying to break the party, go uh, unscathed, which is an interesting uh, discussion. But the most important, Rajdeep, what you said was, you know, it's fine on TV debates to say young people, that people. The question is, who's got the numbers? Who are the MLAs with? And if you don't have those MLAs, then you, would you say that, suppose, let's imagine, I like, you like somebody else, okay? And you say you should have a generational shift. But what is a true democracy if the numbers are with X, Y, or Z? And that's what happened in uh, Himachal. So let no, but your challenge, let's no, I, I'm not denying, you make a fine point, sir, but your challenge, and in all states, I'm just looking ahead at the moment, and I'm sure Rahul wants to move on to other states. My limited point is, any political party in the BJP, to some extent, has been able to do that, not always successfully, not in Rajasthan, for example, is to effect generational change. When you do that, it can be disruptive, as it was with Yogi Adityanath in Uttar Pradesh, uh, as it was with the Pushkar Dhami in Uttarakhand. But it can also bring you rewards in the long run. The point I'm making is eventually when you have to fight a leader like Mr. Modi, as you will in 2024, even if you win a couple of states in a two days from now, as you did in 2018, 
you will find it difficult unless you can script a new narrative and a new narrative sometimes requires a generational change pradeep gupta made the point to me 5 years ago it stuck in my head if you had made mr sindhya in madhya pradesh and mr pilot at some stage in rajasthan who knows at least you would have new faces to ta- to take to the public no no so so look uh, i just want to add my little bit what about uh, uh, ravens reddy and the team which was uh, uh, creating the hype exactly. that is why so, the change no, is exactly it's helping you it's no, helping no, one you sec, one sec. no one sec you need see this is the problem it is not a jandu bomb where you pick up a ravens reddy solution and put it in uh, rajasthan <laughs> You see, you always have a you know cookie cutter approach to Rajdeep to your solutions. What works in Chhattisgarh may not work in Telangana. Fair so, enough. Do you think you want to prop up a younger face? But Ashok, so, you know, sir. Acha, we could we could be we could be counting a lot of chicken which haven't hatched just yet. So let the chicken hatch because they're already talking about generation. Ah, Rajasthan is. Ah, abhi kuch hatch match nahi hua. Let it hatch. Okay, let's now move to Chhattisgarh. So we'll do the same tough fight analysis. I love the responses we are getting, and we're very happy. for you to share your responses your love your hate acha bura whatever you want just keep it going stay engaged so here is chatisgarh so remember as i told you in case you've just tuned in we tell you which seats look clear for which party and which are tough fights if they are tough fights then frankly nobody knows because chatisgarh the congress has 38 safe seats the bjp has 24 which means the congress isn't safe according to access my india's data in chatisgarh uh, it's a 90 seat assembly you need 46 to win which means the congress needs all the seats which have emerged as tough fights in our poll to come to them so if those seven seats come to them then they're at 45 that's good news for them if not then we could have a second super over potentially so it's not just a super over in chatisgarh in rajasthan there could be a super over in uh, chatisgarh as well the bjp has 24 comfortable seats they need to win all the 17 tough fight seats and then some of the congress tough fight seats to be able to pull chatisgarh towards them so it's not easy not for the bjp in chatisgarh regardless anybody who thinks is a bjp leher in chatisgarh that's not happening they could scrape through remember what is it that amit shah and the bjp top brass are hoping for their their theory is I need you to listen carefully to what this what I'm saying. Let's assume 100 people wanted to vote for Congress because of poor uh, organizational abilities. Say 70 of them came out to vote. Let's assume only 85 people wanted to vote for the BJP. Their big hope is because of a stronger organizational machine, they're able to get 77 to the polling booth, which means 77 versus 70, they're still ahead. So even if more people wanted the Congress, the BJP's big hope is they can pull more people. to the polling booth that's what they're banking on which is why they think in the tough fight they could still scrape through on no, sunday but uh, rahul if you see this the strike rate is very high for bjp to get on 17 first they have to win 17 and then try and get some of a few of seven seats so that's why so the they'll be at 41 if they win all the tough fights yeah they but you only. don't always win all the no, tough fights you win what, some you lose the some strike rate is very high here. so they need to win all the tough fights and they need to win some of the congress tough congress. fights and and the others will be again crucial there are lots of seats where the others could pull in 8 10% of the vote right. which could be all the difference between party number 1 and 2 i think chatisgarh because the congress had such a substantial lead over the bjp in 2018 you would say the congress is in pole position yeah. but clearly this is a very interesting state where 5 months ago everyone told you mr bagel is through yeah. now the bjp perhaps some would argue woke up too late or the bjp realized there's opportunity there got their act together in typical bjp fashion and they made it a much tougher fight so mr bagel will have a couple of sleepless nights make no mistake about yes. that because if he is below 50 at some stage the bjp will pounce on him so mr bagel as per your uh, safe and tough fight is at 45 in a 90 member assembly he wins all his 38 safe wins the tough fight he's still only at 45 he will then need to take at least half of those tough fights with the bjp to be above 50 no so basically so nobody can predict with yeah, any... at about 50 he will sleep well no, so with no definite confidence interval can you predict that you will win all the tough fights i mean really nobody knows even pradeep doesn't know you can allocate them in different ways you'll win some of them you'll win you'll lose some of them but the fact rajdeep is and i believe whether it's cricket or elections luck plays a role yes 
वॉज द विनिंग बैंड वैगन इफेक्ट इसका बल्ला चल रहा है उसका चल रहा है वो थर्ड मैन के ऊपर छक्के के लिए जा रही है जिसका नहीं चल रहा है वो आउट हो रहा है योगेंद्र यादव टेल्स मी एंड वी हैव टू वन डे सॉल्व दिस मिस्ट्री वी इवन टोल्ड डॉक्टर कुरेशी वन ई वॉज इलेक्शन कमिश्नर वाई इज इट दैट आफ्टर थ्री ओ क्लॉक the party which is leading seems to get all the closely contested seats all seem to go one direction or at least 70 or disproportionate number no, of them go I, one I, direction i have a reason what i, is the I reason? know that i know that what see, is the reason see in any 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 assembly constituencies there are so many number of polling booths so as many as booths as many as machines so whoever is party is winning Mm. meaning they are likely to win in most of these uh, booths so that wherever is the momentum it gets on to that direction ye kya baat hui yaar 3 baje ke baad momentum ek taraf chala jata hai 3 baje ke baad nahi jata hai 3 baje ke baad concluding stage aa jata hai jo last ka 5 se machine bachta hai par jahan tough fight hai jo aage hai wo 10 12 seats 20 no, se nikal raha hai 15 se i have a different theory it's just mahol let's assume that ha to fir uska matlab kya hai no three of you have a very strong opinion and two sitting on the other side don't the ones who are most committed show up really early in the morning they want to go out and vote and some people e- even on the last day and just before that are still undecided they kind of on the fence okay they can go here they can go here. once they figure out that the mahol whether it's through tv social media general conversation is in a particular direction they just go with the flow no no rahul i am talking about counting counting day. Day. is talking about i am saying yeah. after 3 o'clock day. on after 3 o'clock on counting day i have noticed and i'm not making any insinuation nahin, what, nahin, what yeah. why is it nah. why is it that all the close fights often go in one direction nahin, nahin, yeah nahin, 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 this is very interesting i'll just i i i'll show you data okay. i'll give you nahin, data nahin, on this aise hota hai aise ho hi nahi sakta how can it be yogendra yadav prepared data rahul ऐसे होता ऐसे होता तो एक वोट से नहीं हारते थे नहीं 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 ऐसे नहीं चलो ट्वेंटी थर्टीन में ट्वेंटी थर्टीन में तो बीजेपी को पीएचडी ऑन दिस नो नो बट इफ दीज पोल्स आर राइट इन तेलंगाना एंड इन सम ऑफ दी अदर स्टेट शोली दे वांट say so, that the election process itself is corrupt you want to give us telangana no, the no 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 i want to show you chatisgarh i want to do a strength scanner because this is very interesting you're talking about one uh, super over i think there could be more and i just want to take a minute to explain why okay no okay wait my big fear with these touch screen machines they're very powerful analytics engines but even when you come to office in the morning and you turn on your computer sometimes it doesn't come on so that's my big fear anyway so here it is the strength scan for the bjp in telangana so the bjp has only and remember the big difference between uh, madhya pradesh uh, rajasthan and chatisgarh is chatisgarh is a more fluid state madhya pradesh and rajasthan have more entrenched voting patterns it's a newer state and a more fluid state so the bjp has only six safe seats in chatisgarh seats that they won in every election for the last three elections the bjp has 25 relatively safe seats elect seats that they won twice in the last three elections our poll predicts they'll bag 11 of them The BJP has 46 weak seats, seats which they won only once in the last three elections. Our post-poll data predicts they'll bag 24 of those, uh, and they'll win three out of the 13 very weak seats. If I come to the Congress's data, the Congress predicted to lose four out of nine safe seats, picking up only five, picking up only 19 out of 44 relatively weak seats, and picking up 17 out of 30 weak seats. So no batsman, as I said, Pradeep, in Chhattisgarh. is hitting it out of the park i mean if they win it's a struggle it's just whoever wins it's a struggle in chatisgarh that is been always the case except last time bjp has won three consecutive elections and they have never ever crossed 50 mark I see the majority was... mark is 46 and all three times they have been 47 48 49 so i can show that see if you see they're very close to 50 when they win yeah. and then that that happened in 2003 8 and 13 and then they crash boom it's just like the bottom falls out of it and the congress goes booming to the top now our poll predicts a much much tighter fight in some senses chatisgarh coming back to its mean uh, and this was really the anomaly the outlier where the congress won in a very convincing fashion because of three terms of anti incumbency against dr raman singh so who rajdeep as we come to the end of this show just a few minutes to go who according to you after the telangana numbers is most nervous look i think all the parties are nervous everyone's nervous this is a very strange exit poll day where different exit polls have directionally gone in different directions it's a test not just for the political parties for the pollsters 
you will have fly by night pollsters who will be exposed i believe on <laughs> sunday who just throw numbers at you and don't do the kind of rigorous work that pradeep and his team do and you will have those uh, political parties as a result who will be clutching at straws both the parties are cherry picking you get a bjp guest today and they will tell you how they are, how madhya pradesh is a sign of the times and you get a congress guest today and they'll tell you look at telangana it's a sign of how the world is changing i think the fascinating thing about these about the polls in the last 24 hours is just how competitive indian elections are how State they elections. swing how, how they competitive swing assembly every, elections are assembly elections how they swing between five years look at chatisgarh a sweep for the congress five years ago has turned now into a close race take a look at uh, 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 madhya pradesh a cliffhanger seems to be going towards one side Take a look at Rajasthan, the rivals of five years, uh, uh, rotational government, suddenly you have a tough fight. Look at Telangana, a state where KCR appeared unbeatable, Congress kahin se aa jati hai, Revant Reddy, did we know of him even five years ago as a potential future leader, here he emerges. So I think... And Mejoram also. It and I think there's a message Mejoram. for political parties. All these winners, six months ago, many of them were being written off or vice versa. Shivrat Singh Chauhan was being written off. He seems to be bouncing back. Ashok Gelot was being written off, bouncing back. Bagel appeared comfortable. The other side has come in. And KCR appeared comfortable. Along comes Raven Threndy. I think it's fascinating. But if there's one thing that I've seen in all of this, it is the woman factor. You know, the one consistent theme in all of this, Joe Mahila, in all Pradeep's numbers, first thing I ask him, please show me who's ahead on gender. The moment I see someone ahead of gender, nine times out of ten, they will win the election. So, Preeti, you're the boss. <laughs> Why, Rajdeep? You don't want to tell us what women want. <laughs> no, no, but you agree with that. No, but no, are, you seeing, I, are you seeing a distinct you. change when you go on the ground? Women having more sure. agency also when no, they go. No, 100%. I do agree with what Rajdeep is saying. Women have more agency. And, you know, they, they understand that they're the kingmaker. They understand. So, that. I actually and have data which quantifies this. You know, everybody else has an opinion on this. Let's just look at what the data says about women voters. So, I did a cross-tab across our three... In the heartland states to try and develop a trend and the point that we're discussing is actually very significant wherever the women have gone in bulk in this election that party in our post poll study has come out on top so in madhya pradesh for example the bjp according to our poll is predicted to bag 50 percent of the women vote up seven percent from the last time much more than any other factor that singular factor gives shivrat singh chauhan and the bjp a big majority in the our poll in Madhya Pradesh. The Congress has only 40%. That's a 10% gap in a bipolar election. That's massive. In Rajasthan, the Congress has 44% of the women vote. That's 4% up from the last time. A 4% gap with the BJP, which has only 40. A 4% gap in a bipolar election is very important because the men vote was far closer than the women vote. In Chhattisgarh, the BJP has 43, the Congress has 41. So that's a tighter fight. The BJP up 9%. So one thing which is very clear is the revival of the BJP in Chhattisgarh pushed. That's why I'm not ruling out. You know, Woman the one voter. reason why I'm not ruling out the BJP winning Chhattisgarh is this number. I'm, I'm, is I'm number. saying that the BJP is in the fight in Chhattisgarh. They had this particular scheme that they've got for women, 12,000 rupees a month, yeah. uh, 12,000 rupees a year. I believe BJP is in the fight in Chhattisgarh. Do not rule out the BJP in Chhattisgarh. This is the number. Anyone who wins, I haven't seen an election. Someone can prove me wrong. The winning party has always got a majority of the women vote. Mamta Banerjee, Nitish Kumar, all but of them. But you know, Rajdeep, with what you said yesterday, you know, I'll just come in on that. Except okay. Telangana, that is why my, this thing is that it may go to the hung assembly of 58 exactly. seats. The point in is Telangana, the KCR has the advantage. Ah, it's exactly. not over the Congress, but among the male and female. It's not over the Congress. Because there are so many women-oriented schemes. Yes. I mean, Telangana no, but if, you know, the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. KCR has a two, per, uh, sorry, Congress has a nine percent lead among men, men, yes, and has only a two percent lead among percent. women, yes, yeah. So the two percent is within your margin of error, presumably. Yeah, but but when you see the KCR uh, BRS party vote among male and female, women is four percent more. Than so me. therefore, don't rule out KCR either. <laughs> Message of the day. After all that we've said. Case, don't rule out KCR, don't rule you know, out I'll BJP, just... don't rule out Gelot, 
and certainly don't but go down Chitra. But I'll finish with what I said. Yesterday, Rajdeep had made a point that women like a more gentler, more, uh, you know, <laughs> a calmer point. kind of a leader. But no, Rajdeep, that's not true. Look at it. They, want, women, they want cash in hand. No, 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 no. yes, not, the, not cash in hand. They don't want cash in hand. They want welfare schemes. And why I say that is, look at it. In Uttar Pradesh, they voted for Yogi Adityanath. Yogi Adityanath with the whole Hindutva machismo doesn't, is not gentle, at least, in the face of it, right? They voted for no, him. But he gives them safety. Order. He gives, exactly, he gives exactly. Okay, so taken. The point is, they'll go with somebody who, A, we'll gives them the promise of, them. of safety, and more so, you know, welfareism, the money that is coming in, 1250 rupees, is big in Madhya Pradesh, where even for Gehlot, if you look at it, the, uh, you know, the scheme, be it the health scheme, for the women, it's very big. No. Be it the mobile phones, be it 500 rupees a cylinder, it all clocks in. Gupta ji, what are you who, most worried about? Who's yeah, ever, of, who's ever is take care of women. Chie, Radka, yeah. Who are you, what are you most worried about? Five to ten seats. Five seats in the states where 100 total seats are there. And 10 seats in the state where 200 and 200 plus seats are there. So you that are confident that your lucky is five. the way lucky. Rahe. Thodi upar niche ho sakti Site plus minus in a smaller state, Telangana, Chhattisgarh, Mizoram, and 10 seats maximum in case of Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. And that is the reason no, I, why I say in Rajasthan is sitting in a very so Rajasthan hung case. Which is why, yes. which is why all these assembly. states, which is why all these states could it go to so the hung assembly for which both. Is why, are you, are you worried about way beyond the, the, the women factor, I'm definitely worried because the women are traditionally known to be supporters of KCR. I mean, he gives them that sense of comfort, yes, yes. right? And especially in terms of the welfare schemes. So why would they not vote for an extension for the next five years? That could be what so we said. I, I, the only caveat is that the Congress's six guarantees, that, which promised yes, them even more. There, there, there was this one leaked video tweeted from our official handle, which went viral. There's one more, I'm told, which has Pradeep Gupta practicing to Natu Natu. So he got like one entertainment producer to kind of help him dance to Natu Natu. So Rajdeep, Pradeep and Chetan Bhagat. Apparently, Rajdi is being trained by his son. He has an entertainment producer training him. Uh, and we got Chetan Bhagat to make his moves and stuff. They're dancing to Natu Natu. Go. I will give you a song to Which, end the day. Okay, because you've got two nights before the 3rd of December. And I think all the political parties are going to have sleepless nights. Now, except for Shivrat Singh Chauhan, if Pradeep is on, bang on, all of them... Five, ten seats here and there can make all the difference all right. in all these three states, including, of course, also in the fourth state of Mizoram. Ek gana hai, raat baaki hai, baat baaki hai. Hona hai jo ho jane do. Kya baat? Wow, very well. Hona wala hai. Raat ko, raat ko, bahut kuch hona wala hai. No, so speaking of which, no, speaking of which, right? DK, DK Shiv Kumar has yeah. already moved yes. to Telangana. He's been told, apne logo ko ek. I am telling you, Rahul, you are in for a super Sunday like you've never seen. I believe you are going to see the most thrilling day Exciting. in counting history. Rajdeep, I told you Exciting. before this exit poll, yes. this is going to be very exciting, unprecedented five-state election where you will find lots of thrill, lots of super over and lots of whatever you can, mud throwing to each other. Yes, if, it, yes, if, it, if it gets tight, that's, I am most excited, I mean, I don't particularly care about who wins and lose, nothing really turns, everybody's going to give us gali, so that's fine. But the election intelligence dashboard will really come into its true form. You know, I, if the election is one way, then nobody's interested in my data. They say, ha, okay, I know who you are, you But if the election gets tight, then every comma, every full stop, every inside, every nuance gets thrilling to a point. And remember, the election intelligence dashboard became famous in Madhya Pradesh in 2018 because of the margin calculator. From there, we've done multiple upgrades, lots of high-quality visualizations, live insights, which would take cephologists, election pundits, days after counting, typically, to be able to put together with this magical machine. <laughs> we'll be able to do that for you live in real time. And that's not polling data, that'll be live counting data.